report. Let's get some analysis. We're joined by Ignacy Guadens, a Catalan lawyer and former MEP, former European Parliament member, of course, having served also in the Spanish Parliament and the Spanish government. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Um, if this were a plot in a film, you'd say it was just too far-fetched to be real, but this is real. It is going that's, on. That's part of the tragedy, isn't it, that the, it this is. is actually happening? It is a tragedy, and it has, well, if it was a plot, I would say there are too many layers, so I would tell the script writer to make it easier, because it's not easy for the viewer to follow. <clears throat> there are too many layers, and each layer deserves its own interpretation. So there's a political layer going on, and that's a fact. I mean, I was listening to your, your chronicle there. Of course, there's a political problem, and there's a lot of people in Catalonia who want independence, and whatever has happened in the last month hasn't changed that. There is an, a call for independence, which is not in the majority of voters, it's in the majority of seats and majority of minority it's more than two million people so it is an issue which is uh, uh, an issue that, that the Spanish government is in denial of and it tries to sort it only through the legal means but of course the legal context is also real and uh, many of those in the independentist side completely forgot that Spain is a country with the rule of law and they thought that they could just you know, impose their will on their own and forget the criminal code, forget the constitution, forget any law and just apply whatever the public opinion or, or democracy in their own interpretation had said. And even the best cause, even the best cause you might think of, I mean the minority rights in the United States, women rights, you just, we just heard about limitations to abortions in some countries, you know, it's a, which is a great, great cause to fight for, but you fight for within the law, within the law, never against the law. So the law needs to be applied. And that is what has made Mr. Puigdemont run away from justice. Somebody running away from law, some of his colleagues are in jail now because they completely violated all uh, several laws applicable to them, including deviation of funds. Uh, and what is happening is not that the Spanish government is preventing Mr. Puigdemont from being elected as such. That would not be possible, of course. Spain is a democracy. What he cannot be is elected via Skype, you know, <laughs> and that is common sense that says you cannot get elected via Skype in a democracy, in a parliament. Parliament's are about being there, about the immediacy of a debate. So that's what, that, what every single legal service has said and what is now being, being analyzed. So if the majority of the Catalan parliament still pretends to vote from which they put them on on a kind of distance voting, you know, Skype, telematic voting, uh, well, then we will be in trouble because uh, probably he will not be confirmed by, by the king, in fact, which formally, normally just a kind of signature. But the, the very job of president of the Catalan government is to be confirmed by the Spanish state. That would not happen. And we would enter again into the cycle of, of, of legal Tension. Okay, you've been very reasonable in, in the way you've described all these things. I, I sense you're agreeing with Mariano Rajoy about the way this has to be done. Can I ask no, you? No, no, I don't agree with him. No, no, no. I agree with him saying that the law must be respected. I very strongly disagree with Mariano Rajoy about not providing any political issue to this. Of course, no. I mean, Mariano Rajoy is corresponsible for the situation because he should look into this through a political view, which doesn't mean giving away or paying a ransom to independentists or that kind of language. That's useful. You have two million people in Catalonia who do not want to be Spaniards. And I'm not saying they need to become, I mean, independence is reasonable. I completely oppose independence, but that requires some kind of political solution and a political treatment. It cannot be just dealt through the Supreme Court. So the way Spain has handled this issue so far, I mean, clearly I'm thinking of the, the images that we saw on the referendum day with the police striking women, uh, pushing women around. We saw those kind of things happening. And people can say that, you know, perhaps that might have been in some way manipulated, but yeah. sometimes the images just tell the story and what people saw kind of looked bad enough anyway. Spain's mishandled this whole situation. No, I wouldn't say it's been mishandled everything. I would say that, uh, of course, those images were dramatic. Mm. Of course, there was uh, excessive violence, and that excessive violence, as Spain is a rule of law country, it's being uh, analysed by judges, so there are judges actually investigating that. Mm. Uh, so we will see what results of that judicial investigation. Part of that violence was also caused by independents themselves because they knew they were preparing that. So there are papers preparing for that moment and for those images. The independents weren't wearing the police uniforms, were they? No, no, well, but they 
where yes the catalan police did not do their job so that even that sentence is not true and that's why the chief of the catalan police is also under investigation okay. because okay. he's an independent so even the, the independents are not wearing police or uniform it is not a, a, a just a statement <laughs> so that was part of the problem but anyway yes we that's that's that happened that day that was mishandled that's what clearly mishandled but the whole independence movement cannot be focused on what happened on the, october the 1st i mean that was a fact which followed several violations of law before an abuse of power in the catalan parliament an abuse of the minorities a violation of the catalan statute of autonomy an imposition of a referendum so i'm not justifying any police police abuse i'm just saying that things are much more complex but definitely yes the spanish government is not handling this well in the sense that it requires to handle it politically and it's not doing why not hold a fresh clean new referendum to sort it out well it's a, first that referendum would be forbidden by the spanish constitution as it is forbidden by any constitution saying, in europe why not just do it why, why well it? well we are talking we are in france here uh, we in this country that such a referendum would be banned as it would be banned in any other country in europe so why should spain accept something that is banned in the whole western hemisphere you know uh, i mean it's very funny that people are giving advice to have in spain something that is banned in every other country in europe you might know of uh, referendum to decide the secession of a part of a country is not something that any country accepts you you know so of course we need a referendum or we need to reform the constitution we need to do a reset in the territorial distribution of power i'm not saying the statu quo the statu quo is failed but independence for a part of the territory just decided by that part of the territory sorry that is not accepted anywhere i was thinking along the lines of the way the uk allowed scotland to have its say about whether or not and those kind of things but if you're saying that it's not possible from spain's perspective and citing european examples i'll let you have that uh, western examples <laughs> you can make it much wider <laughs> thank you very much indeed ignacy guadans uh, catalan lawyer and former uh, spanish mep thank you for joining us so we thank appreciate you. your time thank you thank you